years ago, dinosaurs and ancient plants covered the surface of the Earth. These once living organisms are long extinct, but eons of pressure and heat have turned some of the proteins, cellulose, and other organic matter that made up their bodies into crude oil and natural gas, which can be made into many things. Gasoline, fuel for heat lamps, and plastic, including these grassy Herbert Levine sandals. But how can the cells that make up plants and animals be turned into so many other things, even plastic footwear? The answer is polymers. Polymers are chemical materials made of smaller units called monomers that hold together really tightly like paper clips in a wall of paper clips. Because the wall is made of lots of little pieces, it can flex and bend and take on lots of different forms. Polymers are commonly associated with plastics, but you can find them in all kinds of places, like in your body, or in your ring wear, or in your high fashion outfit. These sandals are made from petrochemical plastic, that's plastic from the crude oil derived from organisms that lived on Earth millions of years ago. There are other kinds of plastics too. This bugged out necklace by the surrealist designer Elsa Schiaparelli is made from cellulose acetate, a semi-synthetic polymer. Semi-synthetic means it was made using science, but has materials from the natural world in it too. And this comb may look like a tortoise's shell, but it's actually made from a semi-synthetic plastic also, called cellulose nitrate. That's a good thing. Before plastic was invented, combs like this were made from the shells of real tortoises, an endangered species. Glue, another polymer, used to be made from animals as well. Now we can produce safe alternatives using synthetic polymers instead. Animal shells, horns, and hides are made from the same natural polymers as the ones in our body, as well as natural polymers that are found in products produced by plants like resins, sugary gums, maple syrup is one, and oils. We can find examples of polymers all over the museum. Polymers are strong, but not invincible. Sometimes, environmental factors like heat, humidity, and light start to break apart the hold the monomers have on each other. Scientists at the Met use high-tech equipment to study the polymers in each object to see what they are made of and determine the best way to keep them safe. Some solutions could be to keep the polymers, which are light-sensitive, in the dark. We can store polymers, which are sensitive to moisture, in a dry environment. Sometimes uh, it is advisable to keep plastics uh, in a cold or even freezing temperature. So we keep them in cold storage. Cold storage, that's a big refrigerator the size of a room. But not all plastics degrade with time. Too often, fashion is all about what's popular right now with little consideration for what happens to clothing in the long run. This fast fashion often means that many clothes that don't break down naturally are thrown away and end up as pollution in a landfill. By studying polymers, we may be able to create art, objects, and outfits that will be as good for the future as they are for our fit.